There we go. All right, we are recording. So uh, just to just to summarize, what I was saying is, uh, I've had a lot of experience, um, personal mm-hmm. experience with mindfulness that has really taken my trading to the next level. And this initial session is really about demystifying some of the myths or misconceptions around meditation, how meditation can help us in our trading practice, uh, a lot about self-awareness. Uh, and like I said, this is definitely not my area of expertise. I just know that I have had a lot of benefit from the uh, from the experiences that I have had uh, with this kind of stuff. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Trader Bianca uh, to kind of talk about some of these concepts and really for this for this initial session we are really looking for you all's feedback on what you think would be beneficial from the different things that we're going to be talking about okay so this initial session is to kind of lay the foundation of some ideas that we have around what this group can be but we really want your feedback uh, to to get information about what you think would be helpful from this aspect as well and with that bianca take it away yeah hi hi everyone um i'm so excited about this um and uh thanks steve for the uh nice introduction um well let me tell you just a little bit about myself i i don't have um the lengthy trading background that steve has but i do have a very long background in yoga i've been a certified yoga instructor for over 20 years and obviously practitioner And, um, you know, some of this mindful practice obviously goes hand in hand with uh, yoga because yoga is really just mindfulness and awareness in a physical, in in the physical form. Um, So I wasn't sure about uh, how this would work out logistically here today. If, if people were able to access their mics and ask questions if they wanted to, how do you, how do you see that happening, Steve? Yeah, I'd I'd like to open it up, but let's do this. Um, if you're not on mute, well, I, have, I have other stuff to go over first. If you know, if you want to wait for that, if you want to, I don't know. Yeah, what I, what I'd like to do, the way I'd like to work that is, if somebody would like to jump on and ask a question instead of typing in the chat, please let me know in the chat first, and then I'll give you the okay, uh, so you can jump on and and unmute yourself and and start that way. That way, we don't have a bunch of people jumping in randomly or talking over each other, that kind of thing. So yeah, I think that's a good idea. Okay. So um, first of all, I want to just quickly touch on, because people say meditation, mindfulness, kind of interchangeably, and they are really quite different. So meditation you know, we're often asked to sort of clear our mind, let go of emotions, don't have thoughts, which most people find incredibly difficult. You know, it's, it's unless you have years and years of experience with that, it's, it's a very difficult thing to get started with. Whereas mindfulness is more about paying attention to the thoughts that you do have, paying attention to the thoughts that, or the emotions that come up, especially important for us as traders, the emotions that come up and being present with those emotions and without judgment. So you're more detached from them and you can observe them rather than judge them. So that's, I think, what is the main difference between um, mindfulness and meditation. Uh, obviously, we're, you know, we're doing them sort of in the same framework where we're sitting and, you know, we're sort of erect in our posture and, you know, maybe cross-legged and we'll go over some of the best positions in a while too. Um, but that's the main thing. And, and I think the most important thing and maybe one very important aspect of this for traders is the aspect of non-judgment. So negative self-talk and um, judging ourselves when we make a bad decision or, you know, we, we, we muck up a trade, we fat finger something, you know, those things are not helpful. But once we observe them, we can when we become aware that we do things like that, we can work on 
letting them go and really not getting hung up on these types of um, things. So that's, that's the first thing I wanted to, you guys have any questions about that particular aspect? Anyone? Don't see any questions okay. yet. Okay. All right. So, um, so what are, what, what, what might be the benefits of having a mindfulness practice? So like I just said, you know, being aware and knowing your thoughts and your feelings about a particular situation and coming to an understanding that those thoughts and feelings are just that they do not have control over you. You do not have to succumb to them. You do not have to um, react. You do not have to do anything with them other than observe them. And obviously those kinds of things take practice. It's a, it's an ongoing practice that starts small and gets built up. Um, and then when you have that knowledge and you start to really become aware of your thoughts and you really start to become of your um, aware of your emotions around trading, then that knowledge can lead to making better judgments um, that lead to hopefully greater success in trading. So that's, I think, the main benefit for, for traders um, that we become aware of, you know, we all, we all have done it, we all do it probably still to a degree that we, we make knee jerk reactions because there's an overwhelming emotion that comes up when we see something happening and we have a knee jerk reaction. And instead of having that knee jerk reaction, we st take a step back and observe ourselves having that reaction without judgment and then decide to, you know, what is actually the best course of action here rather than this knee jerk reaction. And, and Bianca, so, not to, uh, not to cut you off, but I want to, I want to add something to that because I, um, one of the things that, as I mentioned, when I was working with a trading psychologist that he had me do that relates to what you're saying is what I would do. So I've, I've got an Apple watch. And so what I would do is every 20 minutes, it would, I, ha I would have an alarm that would go off, which is just a vibration on my wrist. And the, the intent of that was specifically about what you're saying is, you know, you get in this mode of your, your in trade, your trading and, and, you know, maybe, you know, maybe, especially if you're day trading, you're kind of in front of your screen and you're in, you're, you're locked in, you're laser focused on what you're doing. And, and then you start without even knowing it sometimes, you know, having this maybe negative self-talk if things aren't going your way, or you start making decisions based on your emotions, are you making decisions that you know you shouldn't make, but you, but you start doing all of these things. And sometimes it's on a subconscious level. Sometimes you even know you're doing it, but you still do it. But the intent of that little buzz from my watch was to pause, step back, breathe, observe what I was feeling from an emotional standpoint, observe myself and make sure that I was making the correct decisions in my trading and that, and then as soon as it went off and I, and I took literally, I started off taking a couple minutes at a time. Uh, and then it got down to, I could, I could kind of run through everything in my mind in about 30 seconds. And then I would just hit repeat and it would be set for another 20 mm -hmm. minutes. And so it was every 20 minutes I was pausing, reflecting, having self-awareness about what I was thinking, doing decisions I was making. And it made a huge, just that one little thing made a huge difference to the point where I don't, I don't have that alarm set every day anymore, but sometimes when I know that I'm going to need it, I'll, I'll go back to that technique, go back to that practice as something to kind of just give me a reminder to refocus. And, and it was such a massive deal. So I just wanted to throw that in there based on some of the things that you just mentioned. Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea, actually. I, I love that idea with the little alarm. Um, and, um, you know, one of, the, one of the biggest problems that I think um, people have initially is that they go, oh, you know, it's not working. It's not working. It's not working. And it, 
we have to remind ourselves that this it's, it's a muscle that has to be trained. It's not something that's going to just magically appear and you'll be able to, you know, be mindful like every second of every day and, and just be perfect at it. It's a muscle that has to be developed and you practice, you start off small and then you grow that practice. And one of the things that I love to do, um, you know, because we're all sort of uh, busy, we have busy lives, we have lots of things to do. And um, one of the things that I love to do is taking an, a really ordinary task, like washing the dishes, for example, and turning that into a mindfulness practice where I'm completely aware of everything I'm doing and I'm completely present in this moment and I'm not just going through the motions. And it's especially effective, I think, with those kinds of tasks that oftentimes lead us to, you know, just going through the motions where you're just doing something and you don't really even know what you're doing and you just do it. Um, like washing the dishes or, you know, whatever it may be. And um, those are the things when you when you incorporate that kind of stuff in your everyday life, little bits at a time, then I think the whole concept becomes much more ingrained and it becomes much easier to really translate into trading. Absolutely. Somebody saying my voice is cutting in and out. Is that everyone's yeah, it experience? It looks like it may just be isolated to Scotty. Okay. Okay. Yep. Looks like you're good. Okay. So are there any questions at this point? Any questions for Bianca based on anything that she said so far? Go ahead, Bianca. Keep going. If there, if questions pop up, okay. I'll, I'll go ahead and. Uh... So, okay. So a, a few more um, things to touch on is the the position. Like what you know. Obviously, when you're washing the dishes, you're most likely standing at your sink. But if you wanted to have a, a focused practice where you're just you know sitting, um, then the best thing to do is to sit on a um, on the floor ideally with your legs crossed with your spine perfectly erect and I like to give the analogy of, of imagine having of imagining having a little string attached sort of to the crown of the head and that string is sort of gently pulling you up so you're really elongating through the spine through the crown of the head and your chin can come slightly in and so your, your spine is really up and you're um, sitting on your sit bones, you know, evenly with your weight, evenly distributed. And one thing that I encounter a lot, especially also in yoga classes, is that people find that sometimes, depending on their flexibility in the hips, they find that incredibly hard. So then you go, well, what do I do? The one thing you don't want to do is put yourself in a position where you're really, really uncomfortable and you're, or you may be in pain when you're doing this because then all you're focusing on is going to be your pain. So you wanna make sure that you're in a position that is comfortable and you can even sit against, uh, with your back against the wall if that helps so that your back is supported somewhat. Um, what I like to do with people who have a, have trouble and and you can't see me obviously right now so i'm going to describe it as best as i can but if you're sitting in a cross-legged position and you're having trouble keeping your back really straight and your knees your knees sort of start to come up and they're higher really high, much higher than your hips then you probably want to get a nice big pillow or a cushion of some kind and put that under your butt and have your knees ideally lower than your hips that will take a great deal of strain off of your lower back and your hips and it will be a lot more comfortable so that's one tip 
Yeah, that, um, that's definitely me. I, I've always had pretty stiff hips and I've never, even as a kid, I would never felt comfortable sitting on the floor, especially uh, Indian style straight, you know, with a straight spine. It, it just is very, very uncomfortable for me, which means I probably need to do more yoga. Right. But um, yeah, but yeah, for me, uh, you, you know, putting something underneath like that is definitely helpful. Yeah. And so just think about the hips. If you're having trouble with that, sitting up straight, place yourself in a position where your knees are lower than your hips when you're crossing your legs. Um, and that will, that will help a great deal. So that's one thing. Um, people think, well, there's, you know, there's the last pose, the final pose in each yoga practice is called Shavasana, which is a, a the corpse pose. And you kind of lie still on your back. And that can work for you, but if you have a tendency to really fall asleep in that position, then that's probably not a good idea because that kind of defeats the purpose. So, um, you know, but if it works for you and you can stay awake in that position, then that's also, you know, a doable position. Um, so I saw a question here. Trader, J Trade said, sounds like you're saying the practice of being mindful is not trading specific. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. It's not trading specific. As a matter of fact, I think it helps when you start to practice it all around you in your everyday life, and it will filter in to your trading. Because I think that a lot of times when you're doing something, um, like let's say, you know, you're, you're, you have a great meditation practice and you're really good at it and you, you, you worked yourself up to like, you know, whatever, an hour of meditation or 30 minutes of meditation and you, you're, you know, you're really doing it and you feel comfortable in it. And then you come to your trading day and something happens in the market that upsets you greatly, all goes out the window, you know, and that it doesn't help. So that's why I think the practice of mindfulness and, and starting that mindfulness outside of our trading lives with simple tasks. Like, you know, you can be perfectly, completely present sitting there with your cup of coffee and drinking the cup of coffee, enjoying the sensations, focusing on the, on the, on the temperature of the coffee, the flavor of the coffee, the feeling of the mug, your, your, your happiness when you're tasting the coffee, all of those things, that's mindfulness. And you can stay perfectly present with that. And by that action, by those, with those actions of incorporating it into everyday life, it, it will eventually translate into trading. And of course, there can, you can do more trading specific mindfulness practices. It doesn't always have to be something outside. But yeah, I think it, it should be uh, an everyday practice for mundane things. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think, um, I think that's right. I, you know, when I started meditating and I started being more self-aware and more mindful, it wasn't, it wasn't just my trading that got better. You know, I found myself being more present with my kids and my wife, you know, so it helped my relationships. Uh, I, I felt myself being more present in it with my friends and just a lot of different situations. So yeah, absolutely. This is a, this is a life thing, but obviously we're traders and we specifically want to talk about how this can help us in our trading, but by no means is it just, just specific to trading. It's just a way of exercising that muscle, you know, in, instead of having to find, you know, extra time during the day where you're focusing on you know, trading or the mindfulness that translates into trading, you can practice that exercise, that muscle, you know, all really all day long when you're doing different things. So, so Bianca, uh, do you have, and if you're going to get to this and you want to talk about anything else first, feel free to just tell me to pause and we'll, we'll get to it. But one thing that Meech uh, asked, and, and I'm curious too, for you is, do you have a specific routine that you go through every day prior to starting your trading day yeah and and we can do um we can do a short version of it today just to sort of get a, a taste of it um i, I don't want to keep people for too long because i know everybody's busy and has got things to do but um usually 
I like to start with a little bit of breath work to because breath work helps you sort of center yourself and, and focus and come to your body. You know, it helps you to, to really be present in your body and focusing on the breath just for a few minutes, a few breaths, even just, you know, just to, to center the mind. And then there are, and we'll go, we'll go into this um, over the next, you know, few weeks when we're doing this, there are different um, mindfulness practices. Obviously you can be, you know, there could be mindfulness of, of body, there could be mindfulness of thought, there could be mindfulness of emotion, there could be mindfulness of, you know, all kinds of things, it could be mindfulness of the sounds in the room that you're in. So we can, we can try out different things and then you can sort of figure out what works for you because not, it's not the same thing that works for everyone. Um, but I think the, the having a little bit of a, a breath work ahead of a, a practice, a mindfulness practice is a good idea. And so, yeah, are there any questions so far about that or any comments? Anyone want to share anything? No, I think, I think, um, you know, given examples of breath work and what you mean by that, which I think is what you're going to, what we're going to do at the mm -hmm. end here. But I think that that's going to be really helpful for, I know for yeah. me and probably some others yeah. as well. Um, I just so, want to address a couple of questions. 1%. Um, yeah. Thanks for, thanks for posting that app. Um, that, I'll check that out. Um, but you had another question about trading crypto and things like that. That's, that's just not what this is about. This isn't about trading strategies or anything like this, but uh, feel free to post that in the general trader chat and I'm sure you'll get some comments there. Yeah. So as far as, um, as far as breath work, there are obviously a gazillion strategies, a gazillion um, types of, of breath work from, um, very simple to really advanced. And I think the best way to start is with something really simple. And, um, you know, just, I mean, if you guys want to do it with me right now, we can, we can, uh, go ahead and do that. Yeah. So, why don't we do this uh, before, before you jump into that, I just want to open it up. Is there, is there anybody that wants to ahead. come off mute and, and ask any questions? If so, just post in the chat first and let me know if you're interested in, in jumping on to ask a question or make a comment or sharing an experience. Uh, 1%. Yeah, we plan on having these sessions on a regular basis. Um, we'll talk about it that at the end to see kind of feedback of what works for, for most people. Uh, we chose to do it. 30 minutes after the market closed because we thought that would be best. You know, people are kind of getting ready for the trading day pre-market. A lot of people have those pesky things called jobs uh, during midday. Uh, so we found this would probably be the best time, but we're certainly open to uh, other other uh, suggestions. Yeah, I think Meech wants to unmute. Okay, Meech, the floor is yours, my friend. Oh man, I'm actually allowed to talk. Uh, Bianca, thank you for doing this. So my question is, have you ever had anyone who gets more anxious by meditation? What I mean by that is like, if I were to meditate prior to market open and I'm, let's just say I'm doing zero DTE, sometimes like quieting my mind and trying to meditate actually gives me more anxiety about like actually entering the trade. Whereas if like I was working on something else and market opens, I know this is my strikes, this is what I'm doing. It almost takes some of that anxiety away because I'm distracted. Does that help? Like, what do you think about that? Yeah, and um, I would say that what you've been doing to meditate is probably not what you should be doing pre-market. So um, I think meditation, because of the, the misconceptions around what meditation is supposed to be as far as, oh, my mind is supposed to be really still and I'm supposed to not have any thoughts, I'm supposed to not have any emotions, you know, all of those things. And then you have those emotions and you have those thoughts and you get frustrated with yourself, right? Is that, is that kind of what happened? You kind of get frustrated with not being able to do it or do yeah, it right? 
probably more or less every time I've tried meditation, I can barely go 45 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Like and, I'll acknowledge, I'll acknowledge the thought and then try and just acknowledge it and move on. But it's definitely not easy. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely not easy. And it, like I said, it takes practice and it's not something that's going to happen, you know, right away where you just like, you know, Buddha sitting there completely like, you know, in, you know, Nirvana. But um, over time, it does get easier. And like anything, it, it's a muscle that has to get exercised. And I think that what I mentioned in the beginning of not having those really, really, um, you know, high expectations of, of being you know, completely thoughtless and having, you know, no thoughts and, and my, completely blank mind. That's really unrealistic. It's unrealistic for most people living a real life. I mean, a, part of my training um, involved staying in a, in a Zen Buddhist monastery and, um, you know, having to do with the chores and meditating with them and doing the practices that they were doing and, you know, all of that stuff. And their lives, I mean, it was so peaceful there. It was, I didn't even want to come back. I, I, it was so peaceful there. And they were just, they lead such simple lives compared to what we have to deal with in our everyday lives. The kids, the this, the that, everything has to be organized and managed. And there's so many things around that. And so you know, this expectation of having this like blank mind is completely unrealistic. And I, I hope you guys don't expect that because it, it probably won't happen. But yeah. What and, we and can do, yeah. Sorry. I, I was just going to, I was just going to mention, <clears throat> I, I think Meech, I think that every single person in the history of meditation has felt that way when they first started meditating. <laughs> so I, I yeah. know I did. And, you know, one thing that, and, and again, I, I had tried meditating many different times. It could, you know, I always kind of thought, ah, this is just, isn't for me. I'm just not good at this. I can't stay focused, blah, blah, blah. You know, the same thing that most people think about when they, when they first start. And the reality is that that, that's how it is for everybody. And one thing that the, uh, that trading psychologist had me do was, uh, you know, the first, first day I did 30 seconds. Then the next day, I did 45 seconds and I would literally set a timer on my watch to go off at that time. So I would, I would do it. And, and what you would find is, is yeah, you, your mind is, is going to wander. It, it just is. I mean, that's just how our human minds work. But the, the idea is to, at least when I was doing, there's different types of medication and focuses and stuff like that. But this one was specifically just to focus on the breath. And so it was just to literally, you know, think about everything to do with the breath, breath, feeling it going in your nose, you know, feeling your chest fill up with air and then, you know, feeling the air come out of your mouth or your nostrils and seeing, you know, feeling how your, um, your chest and your stomach moved with, with the breath. And so, and then anytime I would catch myself thinking about something else, it, it was just to softly kind of bring it back to the breath. And my mind would wander again, and then you bring it back to the breath. And then, and so, you know, it was 30 seconds the first day, 45 the second, 60 seconds, and I just built up from there. And, it, and then I got, got to the point where I was doing uh, 20 minutes at a time, uh, which I never, ever thought I would ever be able to get to that point. And so, um, you know, it's just, it's just a matter of, of, of doing it and, and kind of pushing through and, and like, like Bianca said, it's a muscle, right? You gotta, you're not going to go yeah. in the weight room and start bench pressing, bench pressing 350 uh, pounds. If you've, if you've never lifted weights before. Uh, so it's starting with hundred pounds and then doing 105 and then doing 110 and continually building up to that. Yeah. And, and also, um, you know how, when we trade our, our SPX trades, our zero DTE trades, everyone sort of has their own little tweak to it, does their own little thing. And it's kind of like that, where you have to find what works for you. Does it work for you to focus on your breath? 
Does it work for you to visualize something in your head? Does it work for you to repeat a mantra in your head? Everyone may be a little bit different. And so over the next few weeks, we're going to explore a few of those options and you can then decide and go, oh, wow, this, this really resonated with me. This really worked for me. I'm going to continue doing that and build on that. So The, the um, other thing to your point about doing it before trading, what I found worked best for me in the mornings is to do it, well, number one, to do it before I drank any coffee or had any caffeine. Because <laughs> if I tried to meditate after I had a cup of coffee, my mind was just you know shooting all over the place. So that, that's number one. So I would do it before I had any coffee. I would do it before I did any of my market prep. Uh, I would do it literally kind of first thing. For me, I did it first thing when I got into the office and I wouldn't even turn on my computer beforehand. Otherwise, I would get distracted with emails or Discord posts or you know everything I do to get ready for the trading day, You know, planning my zero DTE, f figuring out the strikes, all that. I had to do it before I got to any of that. And, um, and that, that was, that's what worked best for me. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that's, that's a really good point. You have to play around with it. You know, you have to figure out what works for you and not everything is going to work for everyone. And, um, yeah, and there are a million different ways of going about it. So, and we're going to explore some of them. So any, I think J trade said you wanted to unmute. Yeah. J trade, go you ahead and to... unmute and, uh, let us know what you, what your question is. I saw you unmuted, but I'm not hearing you. Me neither. Maybe a uh, mic issue or something on your computer, but yeah, we're not we're not hearing anything. All right. Okay, so he typed, no experience with mindfulness practice. What is the first step? Not trying to be funny. Is it just being self-aware when I drink my coffee and doing the dishes? <laughs> you took me literally there, didn't you? Um, well, those are just, you know, elements of a whole. Obviously, you can, um, you know, you can have um, a mindfulness practice at any time of day. If it's one that's specifically for your trading, you have to sort of figure out what works best for you. Does it before or is it after? Um, you know, you can play around with that. Um, but what I was trying to convey is that it doesn't have to be in order to practice the muscle, in order to exercise the muscle. We don't have to confine ourselves to, you know, 10 minutes pre or post market. You know, we can exercise that muscle all day long if we want to and be fully present with all kinds of things that we do. And um, one thing I wanted to um, uh, mention also for Meech again um, is that aspect of non-judgment, you know, or everyone for that matter. When you start doing this um, and you pick, you know, your time frame and you sit down and you have total monkey mind. And it just goes, and then this is what your, your mind will do. The more you go, okay, I'm going to be really still right now and be really present. The more your mind is going to go, oh, no, you're not. Here's something to think about. Here's another thing to think about. And here's this and that and this and that. And off you go, right? So that happens to everyone and it will continue to happen. But at some point, your mind will realize that you are not paying it any attention. You are not following the lines of thought. You're not engaging with the thoughts. You're sort of, I like to sort of visualize it as these like thoughts that are coming into my head and I'm just gently pushing them away and coming back to my body, coming back to my mind, focusing on my breath. And even if I get distracted by something, the awareness, simply cultivating the awareness of bringing yourself back from that distracted thought to what you're doing is mindfulness practice. 
And those intervals between, oh, I just got distracted for like three minutes by this thought and I didn't even realize it, and bringing yourself back, those intervals would get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And that's when you start to realize, oh, wow, this is really like getting good where I'm just like not really getting that distracted anymore. And your thoughts will stop coming in that fashion. They will stop barraging you. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a funny thing how the mind works, but it will eventually um, quiet down and you'll be able to bring it back to where you need to be. So that's that. Other questions? Andrew K says, uh, does anyone recommend or does anyone listen to music while trading? Um, you know, I've had some of the most incredible experiences um, listening to music and really focusing on music that that can be, you know, of course, it depends on what kind of music you listen to. I mean, <laughs> you know, if you're listening to, uh, you know, I don't know, rap music and you're listening to a bunch of lyrics and you're singing along in your head, then yeah, don't know if that's really going to work. So you have to um, figure out what kind of music might be con conducive to, um, you know. Uh, Unless, of course, it's the Power Hour intro song. The Power Hour intro song, I'm not sure is the exactly the right song, even though it's great. <laughs> I'm not sure it's exactly the right song. But, um, you know, maybe something that doesn't have lyrics necessarily, because at least for me, when I hear lyrics, I see pictures. It's just the two go hand in hand. I can't help it. So anything with lyrics is just going to send me off into this like movie in my head. Yeah, you know, um, I, I totally forgot about this. And it's, it's so funny. This is bringing up so many different <clears throat> memories of, of what I went through with this trading psychologist that I hired. And one, one thing that he had me do is he had me... When, when as they started my trading day and I got into the morning session, he had me listen to Kenny G. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, and I, you know, I've never that that's you know not necessarily the kind of music I typically listen to, but I I gotta admit I started it I started to like me some Kenny G. Yeah, you know whatever works. Say hey, you know uh, I I like to listen to um, mostly the sort of like ethereal kind of instrumental music for that purpose you know that's something that's sort of uh doesn't have a lot of distinct beats and and you know things like that anything that can get you like into a like tapping your toes kind of thing is i think a, a little distracting but you know i mean there are also um you know great uh, Indian chants that uh, pro promote incredible um, states of mind, different altered states of mind. Of you know the, the whole idea of chanting, um, you know, but that's that's repetitive and it's it's uh, a little bit on a different a different plane here from what we're doing. But so. well, let's do this. Um, if you all have any additional questions, feel free to keep typing them. But We've, we've been on for almost 45 minutes now, and just to be respective of everybody's time, I think the last thing we want to do is, is trade, uh, is Bianca, you wanted to take us through just kind of a, yeah. an example. Um, is it a guided meditation or a breathing technique, or what, what would you yeah, refer to a, it as? A, a simple breathing technique that, um, you know, it's a very basic breathing technique, and uh, it can get more involved obviously, but a very basic breathing technique. You know, one thing I wanted to mention as far as the breathing, um, I think it's really important to become aware of what happens to you physiologically when you are trading and you're encountering emotions, difficulties, and, and, and thoughts. Uh, so, becoming aware of what you're doing in your body is really important so for most people that is like you know most people will will clench their jaw probably a lot of people will probably clench their jaw 
uh, m many people will revert to a really shallow, fast breath. And all of those things are sending a message to your brain that you're now in fight or flight mode. And so, you know, your brain reacts accordingly. And so we have to, the, the, what, this is what the breath work can do. The breath work keeps us out of that fight or flight mode so that we can then act uh, intelligently and, 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 and with awareness. So, and, and therefore I think it's really helpful to, uh, really important to become aware of the physiological reactions you have when you're, when you're encountering difficulty or stress. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's do a little, let's do a little breath work. Um, just a short, a short, uh, session here. So I would have you start and, and, and I would have you start by placing your hands. If you're sitting down, place your hands around your rib cage with your thumbs on your, on the back of the ribs and your fingers on the front of the ribs. And just if you, if you're okay to do this, um, try to sit up straight with your spine nice and, and erect and your, the crown of your head lifting up towards the sky or the ceiling and breathe into your, imagine you're breathing into your hands and as your rib cage expands out, you can feel your, feel it in your hands. So with every inhale, breathing into the ribs and exhale fully and feel the ribs contracting. Just go back and forth like that a few times. And, and breathing in fully might seem foreign to you at this point, because unfortunately, many of us um, breathe in a very shallow manner. And we really need to learn to expand our ribs and really inhale fully into our lungs and, and expand. So this is a very simple technique. And when you are comfortable with expanding your ribs and feeling the breath expand into your, your ribs, you can release your hands down, place them on your lap, and keep breathing into your rib cage. And with every, I want you to sort of visualize that with every exhalation, your stress, or your anxiety just drops away a little bit more and you're relaxing just a little bit more with every exhalation <clears throat> relaxation deepens someone behind me We're still breathing. <laughs> So observe yourself for a moment here and see, were you able to stay with your breath or did you get distracted by some other thought? And it might help you if you did get distracted by some other thought, it might help you to just say the words, breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, 
Breathe out. Keep your breath nice and comfortable at your own pace. And think of the breath as a, a circular motion. So at this point, we're not holding the breath or retaining the breath anywhere. We're just creating a circular movement of breath in and out, like a wheel going round and round, in and out. All right, everybody come back to your normal breathing. So that was just obviously a very short beginning of some breath. Um, and, you know, this is, this is not, a, a, this is the beginning of a mindfulness practice. So this is what I would do, or with some breath retention, which we'll go over uh, next time, um, what I would do before the actual mindfulness practice. And then next time we'll talk a little bit more, maybe do like a little guided um, mindfulness practice um, that involves some breath work and then a bit of guided um, practice. How does that sound? Excellent. All right. I, I, I feel like I need to go take a nap now after that. <laughs> I'm much more relaxed. Well, you, you can always continue if you're if you got in the groove. You can always continue a little bit longer if you could stay with it. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's uh you know it's a muscle that needs to be exercised. So you know even if this you know if you got distracted by something else at this point, don't worry about it. Don't no judgment attached to this, and just you know we'll keep practicing. Awesome. Well, thank you so right. much, Bianca. That's a, I think that's a great start and kind of lays the foundation for, you know, different things that we'll do in, in future sessions. Um, I think for now, and you know, unless we, I start hearing more feedback that it doesn't work, I think we'll stick with uh, Thursdays, 30 minutes after the market closed, just like we did today. So we'll, we'll plan on, and I, and I guess I should ask you first, does that work for you for our next one? It works fine for me, yeah. Okay, perfect. So I'll post in the uh, in the Mindset Mindfulness Practice channel, but uh, plan on next Thursday at 3.30 Central, so 30 minutes after the market closes again, one week from today. Sounds great. Looking forward to it. All right, everyone. Take care. Right. Have a good one. Bye, Stay mindful. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Thank you.